Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Gaming the Podcast. My name is John Robertson, joined as ever by Stace Harmon. And this week we are talking about Metal Gear Solid 1. Again, this is our second of three episodes about Metal Gear Solid. Last week we spoke about the opening hour of the original Metal Gear Solid. Next week we'll be talking about Metal Gear Solid 2, which celebrates its 20th anniversary at the end of next week. But today we are all focused on Metal Gear Solid 1's Shadow Moses location. Uh, so, Stace, Shadow Moses is for anyone that's played Metal Gear Solid, even for people that haven't played Metal Gear Solid, it's, um, it's a legendary location. I think it's mm. fair and safe to, to say. Um, one, of the things, yeah. one of the things that sort of, um, you know, going through Metal Gear Solid again, certainly for a game of the mid-90s, it feels incredibly real and grounded in in a sense of reality, even though so much of the game is, you know, overblown and over the top and and crazy, uh, for want mm. of a want of a better word. Um, do you do you do you agree with that? Do you think it's I, Yeah, I do. I do agree with the fact that it is also it's an iconic location, even for people that haven't played it, which is odd because it's odd to me because it's like, well, what is what is Shadow Moses? Okay, well, it's an island, but and there's a facility there. But it doesn't have a lot of it doesn't have a lot of actual like distinguishing unique features about it beyond the way it for me the way that it makes me feel when I when I go and play that game. So it's not and I think that helps. I think that helps the sense of it being a real place in an odd way because it's um it's like an uncanny valley for a location. And I think the more you know a location if if you hear that a game is set in New York or London or Paris or wherever, you have a very definite sense of what that means and what sh- there should be in that location. And and it becomes very, it can become very evident that, oh, th- like they've had to cut down this or they've had to put in a dead end here because they can't just have an entire sprawling city in certain games. Mm. Obviously, certain other open world games do try and do that. Invisible whereas, wall city. Yeah. <laughs> whereas in Shadow Moses, the fact that you don't, most of us don't really know what it's like to you know frequent Alaska or other such far flung places, it just lets your imagination fill in a lot of the blanks, and it adds to a sense of yeah, this feels like a real place because I haven't been there because I don't really know what it's like, but what I'm being presented with does a good job of of matching my kind of expectation or it's plausible. It's like yeah, that that makes sense. It makes sense that there would this this kind of this sort of setting. It's it's all quite. It's all quite in- inhospitable and it's it doesn't try to not be. It's not like it's not one of these like military bases that's got all the creature comforts and oh here's the officer's break room and you know, this, that and the other. It's just like it is just kind of a what it is, you know, it's just like a big warehouse kind here's of Here's a staff room with snooker and air hockey. Exactly. And and, and the, arca- the obligatory arcade machine that yeah. nods to one of the publisher's other other franchises. So I think that that notion of we most of us haven't been to Alaska uh or out that way and don't really know what to expect i think helps make it feel more like a real place than than if it was set in yeah like i don't know (laughs) scotland for us Mm. over here in the uk um yeah so yeah it does it's for me too it does feel like it or i believe it at least you know whether it feels like a real place i I believe that that place there's i I could perfectly appreciate or understand that there's there's probably a place like that somewhere that absolutely does exist for such shady activities as are depicted in Metal Gear Solid. So yeah, yeah I, I, I buy I, into it. I think it's um it's quite brave in a way. Again, Harking are gonna use that phrase like for the time, because for the time video games in the nineties were, I would say, less confident, I would say, and I'll use the word confidence a lot in Metal Gear's in last week's Metal Gear episode. Mm. Um but I think there's a real confidence in having like such a gray and brown color palette throughout the mm-hmm. throughout the vast majority of of the game and the layout being incredibly simple really and just and just like one one square attached to another square attached to a rectangle attached to a square yeah. um which is what <clears throat> which what shadow Moses is it's just a, it's just almost exclusively a sequences a sequence of four four walled rooms attached to mm. one another in a long mm. corridor that sort of snakes a little bit but if you sort of plot the 
the path of the game you're really just going through a long corridor and back again uh often yeah um but i, I think for that reason because of that simplicity of color palette and layout that helps it feel like a real place it helps it feel like a place that's just built for a function which yeah. is in this instance yeah. to store new well to actually create weapons in secret but supposedly originally to store old old warheads um yeah it's, so that, it's like utilitarian in its in its architecture in the way that something like that would be because yeah the, the why they're going they're not going to design it like you know google hq or yeah Apple's no, headquarters, no. you know, Apple it's not going to be like, yeah. like nice curved lines that are aesthetically pleasing. It's like this thing's here for a reason and it's, you know, it, that's yeah. it's all utility and, and function. Yeah, so it feels more like a factory or, or, a, or a military base, like it actually is, rather than like a James Bond villain lair or something, Yeah, which is just yeah. crazy. And because the layout is simple, you never really get lost, so you always know where to go because there's only like two or three options to from where to go at any one, at any one time. So then the your it allows your understanding of what to do and the actions that you could potentially do there to be built around the moment to moment gameplay like avoiding the cameras or avoiding the guards or mm. not leaving footprints or not stepping in puddles or not killing someone or making a noise or or whatever so then your vision of the place is informed more by the actions that you do within it and therefore you get a sense yeah. of the place through your actions more in a lot of ways than like the layout of the place so it's almost like the layout doesn't get in the way of the gameplay you know yeah. so that yeah. it allows the gameplay to inform the place rather than the other way around yeah and, f- and feeding into that i think is that you never i mean you get you know this tiny like radar screen um which doesn't give you much more information in terms of in terms of uh, features than just looking at the screen that snake's standing on but it, it tells you obviously vision cones and things like that that you can't see in in the in the game world um view but you don't get that huge like you know i was playing i've been playing hitman again recently and and that notion of you go into a building and I think immediately you can you can bring up the map and scroll through all four, five, six, seven floors of this building and pick out features. And and that in that particular game that helps you plan, you know, yeah. routes and, and all the right, rest of it. It's like you've got the blueprint from City Hall before exactly, you. Yeah. And which makes sense for the for the narrative of that game. And you know, that's you know, there's it's a, an agency and there's they have resources and they've they've given you that information and those resources up front. And but conversely, this feeds into uh, this is the opposite of that. You have very little available tactical information at any one time. It's kind of you are reacting in the moment. And that, again, fits the narrative because you've been put into this situation. And you have, as we talked about last week, you know, it's the uh, weapons and equipment are OSP, um, yeah. which is on site procurement for anybody that doesn't know, speak military Metal Gear lingo. Um, and it fits. It just, it's like you only, so you only get a limited amount of information at any one time. That also, for me, fits with the narrative. It fits with the you're uncovering this thing as you go through, and it's it's you don't really ever have a, a full view of the story. Um, in the same way that you don't really ever have a full view of the facility, you don't, you know, you don't get to approach it by air for narrative reasons. Um, so you don't get a, an overview of what you're looking at. You you come in, you know, underneath, if anything, not even like through the front door. You have to come in from from below. Um, and through that alien landscape of of the water that we touched on last week into this facility that I think sets it up as like this big monolithic thing, even though in reality, the design and the geography of it aren't that. They are just a bunch of relatively small rooms bolted together. Um, but the narrative sells it. For me, the narrative sells it as a much bigger thing, uh, much bigger. It sets it up as a, as a fortress. I guess it's sort of almost seemingly impenetrable fortress. And you crawl through vents and, and you know, some of those sequences go on for a little while. You crawl through these vents that I think, again, it makes it, it touched on this last week as well. T- it makes it feel like a bigger, a bigger space than it actually is. Um, mm. And it's all just, it's all kind of clever stuff that if you were to strip all of that away and just look at the rooms that you do run through or to look at, you know, like a top down map, um, it you'd realize that it really was it really is quite quite a small space it just mm. is made to feel bigger um i wonder if if on that and just thinking just sort of 
uh, popped into my mind as you were talking. I wonder if that, and this might be clutching at straws here, and Kojima might not have ever intended it, but there's quite a nice sort of relationship with like this whole Cold War um, commentary and, you know, the idea that um, anyone with a nuclear weapon can be mm. this grand uh, sort of player on the world or on the world stage that everyone has mm -hmm. to take everyone has to take seriously um and i wonder if there's a bit of that in what you were saying in that uh the the facility is in and of itself small the space is small the playing space is small but the grand narrative around it is really big so there's mm. sort of like a you know a sort of symbiosis there between each nuclear weapon is really small and just you know on a, on a, on an actual yeah. physical sense small it's, but but it's but its impact on the world it, is ginormous its implications yeah absolutely yeah and i think and whether and what i what i love though about kojima is that whether or not he ever intended that ever thought about that because it's kojima and this is something we talked about in the hideo kojima episode we did uh, a while back it invites you to think things like that it invites you to think more about it because it's like well maybe he didn't plan this but because of how he does other things, maybe there is a possible, there's a bigger possibility, a more, a stronger possibility that, that that was intended than if it had been, you know, insert designer's name here that isn't Kojima. So, yeah, I mean, we, and we talked about that kind of the potential of things that you are invited to think and consider when you play mm. Kojima games um, a while back. But yeah, I th absolutely. And I think, and that's one of the fun things about, I mean, yes, a lot of Metal Gear's narrative is overblown and the, the dialogue is <laughs> exposition heavy and all of that. But there is some nuggets in there that are, that do make you think, that are interesting, that do. I think the fact they use like, they use like stock, proper uh, like film footage of a missile or a rocket taking off when um, Campbell's talking about like nuclear armament and deterrence and, and all of that. And it links it to this, this real world issue that we are you know vaguely aware of or that we you know we hear about from time to time um and in doing so i think yes it does it makes the whole thing feel bigger and grander it makes the game feel bigger and grander and and by extension you know it makes this this thing that you're doing in the place that you're doing it um also feel much bigger yeah. and even though it's a tiny little island it's it's kind of proxy the backdrop of alaska we all, you know, when, well, for me anyway, when you think of somewhere like Alaska, it's, it's this huge open wilderness. It's like, it's that, it's one of the few untamed places. And so it gives it this sense of scope and scale that it doesn't really tap into. It just says, oh yeah, it's a, an island in the Bering Sea. Yeah. Yeah. Near Alaska. I, I like those. Um, I like how, uh, well, you know, some bits of, a lot of Kojima's stuff is quite difficult to interpret or can be interpreted in um, a sort of conceptual way, like a million different ways. And they're mm. all, they, they all can have arguments made for them being real and correct. Um, I do like the, the way some, like, a lot of the Shadow Moses is just so on the nose. Like it's got this Cold yeah. War, this Cold War um, narrative, like theme going through it. Um, and he said it, just off of Alaska, like between mm -hmm. Russia and the United States, the place is literally <laughs> the, it's literally cold. Like it's snowing all the time, and your breath is is a means yeah. for you to be to be caught. You're like on the need to know um, confidentiality. Uh, what would you call it? Restriction. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I do like that there are just some bits that are just so on the nose. Like it's a, it's it's Cold War theme, so let's just make it really cold. Yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah, it's not set in the Bahamas or anything. It's uh yeah, it, it fits. And that I think another thing, yeah, that is also on the nose, but also feeds into that notion of of uh that I believe in this place. Or I I you know, that thing of like, yeah, I, I can imagine a place where this exists. Is that notion that it is ostensibly a like US uh, it's a it's a black ops site or it's a you know it's a, a heavily um need to know highly confidential site that has been created for a purpose for running military exercises and for for storing uh yeah decommissioned nuclear warheads and whatever mm. but it also then ties into like the genome project with with these genetically modified soldiers all of which has been done at some 
point by the US government or with somebody's knowledge from within the US government. They're very kind of keen to say, oh, well, the president knows anything, doesn't know anything about this. They don't sort of ever, I don't think they go to the point of him you know, implicating the president, but it's like there's people in government who know about this. It's been authorised. And it's a thing that the US shouldn't have been doing that has then been hijacked and taken over. And they, the US government, they can't afford for this secret to get out. And so then they have to try and desperately react and clean up this mess. And it's it's just another one of those examples of, yeah, I bet some of the governments around the world do have such secrets that they don't want oh, or that, that people can't know. And that they they it would be more of a... You know, it's on a you, you're on a need to know basis, but you don't ever need to know. Like it's it's just a until something goes wrong, that's when you find out about it. And it's that thing of like, well, this is of the US's making. They've created this facility. Now it's been taken over, and that again, it just leads to you know, it's the kind of thing you'd read in a in a newspaper and just be like, yeah, yeah, that tracks. That that makes sense. That that that's a real place, and that 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 happens. So yeah, that also again for me feeds into that like the believability element of it, and the um, and the yeah, and it would be where else are you going to put it? So we would put it off somewhere like Alaska. It's it's a perfect cover. For well, yeah, and if you ever need the nukes back, you can just yeah <laughs> buy them at Russia pretty easily. Yeah. It's well, pretty, it, just it, next door. Yeah. It's all good. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so so what about the um, on the actual gameplay mm. sides? Because one of the things. So, so the, the, in most of the areas are set out, like I said, in blocks, like in four four walled rooms, and then with four walled yeah. things within those rooms, like crates or mini rooms or whatever. So, you know, it's got it's it's obvious spots for hiding and tricking guards and working yeah. out their patterns and getting around behind them and whatever. But one of the interesting things that I think it does, or, or like going under tanks or whatever, one of the under which are also squares <laughs> or rectangles. <laughs> Um, but some of the most interesting bits of the game, and I would say probably the most, whilst also being most interesting, they're kind of the most frustrating as well, mm. is when they take away that safety net of the blocks to hide, mm -hmm. to hide mm -hmm. um, behind. So there are some some of the boss fights. So the Metal Gear Rex boss fight at the end, the first Raven battle yeah. with the tank yeah. um, and the chaff grenades, and the sniper wolf in the field at the end. Yeah. You don't have as obvious um hiding places in those you do have you do have some but it's not not the same sort of uh layout sort of density of hiding places um and it's interesting on this because you immediately feel vulnerable which is surely mm -hmm. the point um and it, it's it, yeah it exposes how basic some of that design is i think in a in a not in a, a an entirely negative way Except that if you took all of that design and created a game with it now, if you stripped away everything that is effectively the Metal Gear uh, cloak, like the, the the not just the narrative, but the whole the whole mantle of Metal Gear, the what it has meant historically, what you know, the where where certain things came from in video games, take all that away and just look at it as a a stick person moving around an, an environment that is designed like that, and it is incredibly basic. And yeah, to the point that you take away those blocks and it's like, oh, now I feel, now I feel more exposed. But, and it, it highlights how like, <laughs> it's almost, it's a bit clunky. It's a bit like, you know, it's a bit, um, it's, it's not the most slickly, uh, it's not the most slick passage of play when you take those blocks away and you go from feeling empowered to feeling panicked and you have to just, I don't know, lob a, one of those um, grenades to scramble the radar. Chaff and then that chaff grenades and then put down a bunch of um claymores in order for the the tank to run over them and it 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 for me it's just the right side of like well this is one man versus a tank like this is how it should feel it's you're not meant to feel completely in control of this situation but i do think a lot of that lack of control comes from what you're talking about that taking away of your your hiding spaces which is the yeah. thing that makes you feel empowered and, and feel slick is those hiding spaces and they're just blocks they're just like squares they're, they're you know duplex yeah. box blocks you could put on the floor well i think it's an interesting example of why it's why it's interesting and important at all to talk about how video game spaces are designed because just that simple act of taking those blocks away completely changes everything about the game it changes how you mm. act it changes how you feel it changes what you think is possible 
Um, and whilst people, whilst the general sort of feeling and discussion around Metal Gear is about, uh, you know, Snake and what he can do and all these things, but he can't do anything unless the levels are yeah. designed in the right <laughs> way. So everything yeah. is a slave. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's not as hardly sort of saying the word alike, but saying everything is a slave to the level design. But even when the level design is so basic and all they've done is take away your squares, yeah. um, that's it. Like how drastically, how drastically yeah. does that change everything about every single thing about the game? Like how you move, how you act, everything. Like everything it's, is it, completely yeah, altered. You absolutely. go into a whole new realm of existence yeah. um, at that point. And given that the game's so short and that the for a short game, your your comfort blanket your safety net is taken away from you fairly regularly certainly to as as um things go on at the end and things become a bit more action orientated and we can talk about this but i think the second half of the game is nowhere near as good as the first uh, largely because of that mm. um but it's interesting in a game that's so short and these things come up so regularly that you it's just such a an intense uh change in you know the yeah. the emotional yeah. spikes as as the as the levels are sort of taken from you it it i think and it there are direct parallels for me direct comparisons for me with space invaders it is a very similar like you have this setup you are powerful you are you're in control while you still have those little bases that you can duck behind and mm. and will defend you but once they start being taken away from you, you become far more exposed, obviously. Uh, but you can't, it becomes a far... Just that, the psychology of I now feel more panicked, even though nothing has really changed. I'm still... I'm still... control. I, I haven't... Like, the controls haven't been taken away from me. You haven't reversed, you know, the directions of controls. You haven't jammed the gun, so you can't shoot. It's just that you've got these blocks, this bit of level furniture that has been removed, and now psychologically it becomes a different game and it becomes a different and you do you react differently you you take more risks because you need it to be over quicker so there's yeah there's parallels for me with with something like space invaders where it is a very simple change and it does completely upend the thing that you've been initially not necessarily initially presented with uh although that's more the case in metal gear because it's very much stealth stealth and then oh we've taken all that away what are you going to do now well, Snake but, feels so weak in those moments. Yeah, yes, he is. He does, he does get exposed in that, oh, he's not. Yeah, he doesn't have, you know, supersonic speed or he doesn't have this thing that he can rely on. He doesn't have, you know, uh, an invisibility shield or he can't. He leap does have an amazing. In a single bound. He does have an incredible digestive system, though, because as soon as he eats a ration, his health instantly <laughs> gets refilled. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, well, that's. I think that's why he goes to the lengths of explaining that he was able to to smuggle his cigarettes in in his stomach because the peptides that he had to take to protect against the cold suppressed his stomach acids. I think he <laughs> makes a point of saying that, and I think that's foreshadowing because it's like because my stomach acids, boy, yeah. they can digest rations, box and all, uh, in no time at all. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then, and then the other bit I was thinking, like in terms of the. Because there, there is like one middle ground area in which they take away your hiding places, um, but then it's not completely open, which is the cave area, which is a really small area, and mm. it's got the dogs or the wolves mm. that um, that would attack you. Um, and I'm in two minds about that area because the area is incredibly frustrating, and even having completed the game a number of times, I still forget where it is you've got to go <laughs> to get out of there. <laughs> Like still forget every single time where it is you got to crawl under to to escape that area. But so it's super annoying on just like an interaction level. But what I like about it from a sort of door and theoretical level is that the how confusing it is and how difficult it is to know where you've got to go does make sense on on that on that intellectual level because well it it does make the cave feel completely organic and real mm. compared to the very uh, obviously set out very deliberate very blocky rest of the facility so so yeah i hate i hate playing that area but like i quite like thinking <laughs> yeah, about that area it exists yeah 
Yeah, well, yeah, and no, I, I mean, I, this is a, this is a bit uh, pie in the sky stuff, but again, Kojima kind of uh, invites this kind of thinking along those lines. I have this notion that the Shadow Moses facility uh, does the do you know does the facility itself have an actual name? Because Shadow Moses is the island, right? So, but the the facility. Uh, Shadow on, Moses Island, yeah, um, yeah. Because when I th- when I think of Shadow Moses, I always think of that facility. I always think of the that sort of opening few hours of the game where you infiltrate that that bunker, that that military outpost, whatever it is. But that's what I think of, of Shadow Moses being, even though I understand that it's not that. It's it's a wider island. But I think anyway. it's I think it's just called Shadow Moses. So I mean, this is it's embarrassing if it's not because we're doing an episode on it <laughs> but i'm pretty sure the island and the facility are just called Shadow yeah Moses. yeah that's that's yeah that's the uh the titular or at least that's what facility. they're referred to in game anyway yeah well yes they are and i there's a it's off the wall stuff but there's like a part of me that think that likes the idea that the shadow moses facility rather than the island itself is is perhaps not as simplistic as uh as it's presented as um but the way because snake being such the tactician that he is and such the field agent that he is he is able to simplify the view of it simplify like the the navigation from one place to another yeah yeah by sort of compartmentalizing in his mind that this is linked to this and actually it's sort of this big massive because if it was designed now like if they remade metal gear literally remade it from the floor up uh that would be a much bigger grander facility it wouldn't be a series of box rooms um, yeah and it would be better it would be more interconnected as well because the, yes. the whole game is basically one long corridor you go in through the south and out through the north in yeah. most the the majority of areas so who's going to design a base <laughs> where it's just one long like train track basically and to get from like room c to room a you've or room, 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 room f through. to room yeah. a you've got to go through every single whole room and whole facility yeah like who would design that's a like nightmare that? if you yeah if you forget your coffee in the morning so oh, all the way back all the way back yeah. to the dock area now but uh, yeah i mean maybe so what so you're saying that like what we're playing through is essentially an, <laughs> yeah. an abstraction yeah or or like a a reinterpretation um of how yeah. clear everything is in snake's mind or how how his mind has made a complex thing very simple yes, and clear basically in yeah yeah in in a way and i you know i understand well i know as much as i can know that that's not true but i like the idea of that in in the same way in the, and i give it the benefit of the doubt because it's a game that i you know i'm very fond of in the same way that things like i don't know like hitman's you know the vision his his like senses thing that he can do and he can see who knows who he is and who doesn't and he can see where his targets are is like well that's just his his finely tuned senses even though from a from a design perspective i understand it's just a cop out and it's like well it's so you're easier, so but... you're also saying then that other games are just like big long corridors like Mario always starts to the left and goes to the right. Yeah. Mario <laughs> has managed to simplify for us through his mind. <laughs> that's his plumber, his plumber mind at work there. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's it's uh, as I say, pie in the sky stuff. But yeah, maybe. To think about. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is a fun thing to think about. I think one of the other fun things as well is even though we've said that this the the facility is grey and brown for the most part, and it's just and it's a series of quite simply um, interconnected basic rooms. I do think you can see the sort of flair and um, you know more uh, not cartoony, but more kind of you know just sort of creative flourishes the the oddities mm. in it through some of the design of the world as well, not just like the characters. Um, but I like the fact that the a lot of the bosses have their own space yep. that like reinforces who they are, even though like it yeah. wouldn't really make <laughs> sense. Um, and and it's and it's not just the rooms either. So it's not just Psycho Mantis has like a kind of a a psychiatrist, yep. like yep. a shrink room, or Sniper Wolf fights you in like a long corridor and then an open field, like perfect for snipers or. Uh, the final boss fight is in like a giant like gun dam storage facility mm-hmm. basically but it's also that like ocelot the first boss fight um he's got a hostage in the middle like literally and he's wearing his cowboy stuff he's got like yeah. a cowboy revolver yeah. um like a six shooter and he's got a hostage like it's just so it's like yeah. it just couldn't be like more cowboy like it's just so 
even though it's like set up this serious like cold war drama with this like serious agent and a need to know basis and then your first boss fight is like a cowboy that who, bounces bullets off yeah the walls. who can bounce bullets off the <laughs> yeah. wall and has a literal hostage <laughs> Tied to in the, rail- the middle the railway tracks yeah yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> like i just i love that it's um and and yet that doesn't those things that's designed in such a way like it doesn't undermine from the serious discussions around the game mm. even though the boss fights are like pure they're pure like anime basically like they're just yeah. so blown yeah. out of all proportion um but somehow they managed to fit those into what is quite a grim uh, uh i hate using the word gritty but i can't think of anything else but like gritty um <clears throat> you know location as a purely sort of perfunctory uh facility and yet there's all this that they've yeah. and they, they've they've taken over this place and one of the first thing that each individual has done <laughs> carved is out make out their sense. own their own yeah. unique space <laughs> that reinforces them as their own personality yeah it speaks to yeah well it's like the it's like the hubris of human beings and it? it's like like well we could all just stick together like because they it's you're told from the off liquid snake knows that solid snake has arrived he'll eat he, like i think he says literally right at the beginning he'll be through here I know it. I know that he will. He'll be coming this way. He knows that you're coming. They could all just stick together. They could all just sit in the same room. And when you turn up, it would be quite easy to kill you. But no, they like to go on their own little separate bits and then easily be more easily be picked off. And that's just, yeah, it's like the hubris of of every villain ever that thinks, well, uh, you know, I'll be the one to to take him down and to prove that I'm I'm worthy. Um, but that there's a there's I imagine there's a word for that, but there's there's a there's a particular satisfaction from that. You see that in a much more detailed way in things like, so like Bioshock does that with like Sander Cohen's sort of playground of the macabre. Um, there's that. And there's a, I don't think I'm the only one, but I find that very satisfying. I find that that really interesting to go into an area and see how, is different to the area I've just come from based on the personality or the actions of an individual that exists within that world. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, here's, you know, a geographical area that, that is, has, has sort of organically become, has these features and has become this, this area or has become known for, you know, having a particular culture. It's like, this has been very deliberately affected by the personality that exists within it. And that, and there's a even though it's sort of cliched, it's I also find it quite satisfying, and maybe that's yeah. because that's why, perhaps I don't know, because it is cliched. It, it plays into those expectations. You you understand the framework, and then it's just how how are the details kind of surprising you? And that's that it is. I just find that like yeah, and like Mega Man on a more basic level, Mega Man did that loads with the you know each boss has their own level and it's themed yeah. around them. Well, well, I think on a, a more a more recent game, Resident Evil Village is all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've got a vampire in the castle, you've got the doll's house, you've got the weird body horror fish mm-hmm. thing and the um what's his name at the end? Heisenberg, Heisenberg in, the, in the factory. Yeah. The yeah. sort of metal uh sort of cyborg horror or whatever you'd call that. Um so yeah, it's like slaughterhouse kind of yeah, it's like the yeah, and that, yeah, absolutely, and that is it's that I think there's an anticipation element. Perhaps that's partly what it is. There's an anticipation element of knowing once that has been established that that's how it's going to work. Knowing that you're going to different areas, and oh, you know, I wonder what that's going to have, and, and that they're going to have their own sense of progression within that. Um, and they get. I mean, this is more so outside of Metal Gear, really. Uh, is there's a satisfaction in that that yeah, it just it it fits. I mean, if you were to fight, you know, Sniper Wolf like in Psycho Mantis's domain, it just would, it would be odd. It would just be like really it would interesting make no sniper sense. fight in, a, in, yeah, a, in an office. I mean, I'd what, love to see Kojima's doing? interpretation of that though. <laughs> so the, yeah, there is a satisfaction to that. And it is, yeah, even though it is goofy and, and really rather silly when you, when you break it down in terms of what they're trying to achieve uh, and the way that they're going about it. But nonetheless, it does. I think it does make Shadow Moses feel, uh, feel grander feel uh feel more than it is i suppose bigger than sort of the sum of its parts um because yeah people have made it that way people have have claimed a bit of it and 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 imprinted themselves on it because otherwise it is basically just a bunch of 
warehouses, right? Like it's square just, rooms, yeah. Yeah. Some of them got missiles in, some of them got tanks in, yeah. some of them have got uh weapons in, uh, yeah, you know, ammo in. Some um, carbon boxes. Yeah. But it is a lot more than that. Um Yeah, I think I'm not sure what else there is to say right now on Shadow Moses. Well, it, um, I suppose my, my I'd, I'd be because I can't really put my finger on why Shadow Moses or how Shadow Moses is iconic, even outside of those people that have played Metal Gear a lot that like they'll have heard of it. Do, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you like why? Because because is it? It sounds like from everything we've said that it isn't really to do with the design in terms of this is a a beautifully crafted designed video game space in the same way that something like the clockwork mansion in dishonored 2 is is held up as it's like it's not particularly intricate it's not it's very in fact the opposite is very simplistic so do you do you have any thoughts on like what what is it that makes it is it just well, simply that it's a part of a metal gear game is it the i think, I think that's i think that's retrospective a huge, thing i think that's a huge part of it yeah and and i don't think shadow moses is as iconic as say the resident evil mansion well actually, no, i'd say i'd say it no. definitely isn't but i think i just kind of touched on this before earlier but i think what makes it so good and um, is that it just is so brilliantly doesn't it so brilliantly presents level design as a way to make the absolute most out of mm. what Snake can and can't do and the pacing of when it takes away those safety nets for you and you have to be forced in to do something else and when it gives you new weapons and when the boss fights come up for a short game, for a game that's, I don't know, I'm sure some people complete it in like four or five hours and most people are eight or nine hours. Mm. Um, the pacing that is forced upon you through sending you through differently designed blocks levels basically um it's just really clever and and the so it's more about the actual just core fundamental level design rather than the location the location itself because you know mm. whilst the location itself has got is, is got some cute quirks um i wouldn't say it's especially uh you know it's a military base like it's not especially yeah. like unique yeah. in its look or, or 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 complex in its layout like it doesn't it doesn't have the complexity yeah. of the resident evil mansion or it doesn't look as unique as something else like bioshock or something like that yeah yeah it's um, not very memorable in its aesthetic is it really as you said it's like grays and browns and stuff but it is it's yeah it's yeah, just what cleverly, it does with it yeah it's just cleverly paced cleverly cleverly laid out it um you know, it's like like we spoke about in in the last episode. It uses its level design on those first two, like bot like rooms, mm -hmm. the 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 storage area that you come up from, and then the helipad at the top. It's really clever in the layout of how it uses those as tutorials, mm. um, basically, and slowly adds on layers on the complexity in. Like you don't even know you're playing a tutorial, no, but you are absolutely, yeah. Um, and yeah. and I think that's. So it's the the level design of Shadow Moses rather than Shadow Moses as a standalone institution that makes it mm -hmm. so so interesting, so good. Like, like you know, you could put Snake in a completely different environment, and this is why I didn't like some of the areas or some of the way that the other Metal Gear Solid games. We don't want to get into this now, but when Metal Gear went more open in mm -hmm. some of its Metal areas. Gear 3. Yeah, Metal yeah. Gear 3. I'm not really talking about Metal Gear 5 because that's like a completely different design philosophy. But um, I, did, I do feel it lost something. It lost something of those, those constraints really for Snake or you to use Snake in a way that is tense and makes the area feel like a real like claustrophobic, uh, meaningful place. And I think, mm. yeah, Metal Gear Solid 3... And, uh, it did it did lose a lot of, uh a lot of that so like by juxtaposition kind of shadow moses seems really special by by yeah. comparison well yes uh, yeah it does absolutely and and next week we'll be talking about uh well metal gear 2 metal gear solid 2 um does a similar thing with its opening with the, it's on the boat and we'll get to that next week but that will kind of i guess compare how the two uh the two contrast and the similarities and and what's better and what's worse. But that's uh, that's for next week when we talk about that for Metal Gear Solid 2's 20th anniversary. Um, that makes me feel very old. Uh, 
But yeah. until you were then... 35 when that game came out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I felt I probably felt that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So until then, uh, yeah. So so if you want to um, sort of swat up on Metal Gear Two, then do so before before the next episode. Otherwise, do as ever check us out. We are at indiebydesign.net. We've just relaunched our website, so you can go check that out. And we are at indiebydesign on all social media platform so go follow us there get involved tell us what you think about shadow moses and until then we'll see you next time thanks for listening <laughs>